we got another chip drop more mulch so if you are new here my name is Shelby welcome to my channel and most importantly welcome to my garden and if you're like why is this crazy lady so interested in mulch it is our way of doing a deep mulching method so that we can create organic compost a natural ecosystem that all kind of works together over time and it makes our land around the garden healthier everywhere that you see in the garden that doesn't have grass has previously had a chip drop sitting on top of it so we will have it sitting there for at least two months it really suffocates the grass and the weeds and then it makes it so that we can kind of spread it out spread it through the garden use it as we need and then that area is good for at least two years or so without weeds Just for perspective, this is what all of our soil used to look like um, just in the middle of the garden before we started to utilize a deep mulching technique. It's this is actually like better, just natural soil, but it's just sand. There's really nothing to it. And this is where we have mulched for two years now. We did one heavy chip drop in this particular area and now we've just done some maintenance mulching. So I just want to show you close up what that dirt looks like. Now this is why you should consider doing deep mulching as opposed to using garden fabric because look at that. It retains moisture. It is that black compost that you would go out of your way to purchase at the uh, like Home Depot, like Black Cow or something like that. That is literally what it reminds me of. So before you consider, you know, doing some type of like garden fabric or anything like that, definitely see if there is like a chip drop or an arborist in your area that is willing to drop off a ton of mulch. It's a lot of work, but also like setting up those garden fabrics is a lot of work too. And when you are suffocating the ground, essentially you're making it so that that ecosystem can't work together. Um, Anyways, I should do a whole different video on this at some point, but I did want to show that off because I just think it's absolutely incredible the difference between what the exterior of my garden is, which was just like this, and what it is right now, all thanks to mulch. I started a whole new round of sprouts. Actually, I planted these with my son and that is the reason why there are like a thousand seeds per little thingy. But I do wanna show you guys how that's no problem. You can easily uh, separate them and plant them anyways if you overcrowded like your little sprouting area, uh, as long as you have a gentle hand. So I'm just gonna make it my mission to continue to put seeds and plants in the ground at any open opportunity. So I started a whole new round of plants. This is like a yellow squash. So what I'm gonna do is just really carefully pull them apart. My, I only have one kind of like squash zucchini plant that's doing well right now. And all the others had been attacked by different um, pests, namely like melon worms, cutworms, things like that. So you just really gently pull them apart and then now you just plant them in the ground. This bed is going to get, I'm just gonna put like two of these yellow squash in here. Squash does really well in this bed and you, know, you just wanna really gently pull them apart if they're kind of intertwined at this point. If they got any bigger, like now that they have the true leaf, um, you would really be risking damaging the plants after um, transplant. Especially with squash, they develop a root system really quickly and they're really sensitive to transplant. So you definitely don't wanna wait very long 
if you're going to be like sprouting them all in a container together. Um, it's definitely not the cleanest way to do it, but I was sprouting seeds with my son and I said, you know, you do it, just do whatever you want. And that's what ended up happening. So, but we still have some plants to plant all over the place, which is just fine. This is gonna be really tricky to transplant because these root systems are really delicate. Now this is some Italian blend lettuce. My mom got some seeds when she went to Italy, brought them back, so these are straight up from Italy. And I'm hoping that at least a few heads of lettuce will you know, come to fruition from this. So it is really exciting. I'm just gonna have to try to break it apart in sections. I'm just gonna take like a big section here. So now we have a lot of heads of lettuce right here, but now they're all kind of like falling apart. And then from here, I'm going to very gently plant them in the garden bed. So just, you're kind of allowing them to fall apart a little bit before you replant them. I wish I had the seed packet to show you guys, but if you're able to kind of disconnect and then that little sprout, it might survive. <laughs> so just plant more than you need and a few could survive. So I just let my son dump as many seeds in each container and this is what we're left with. They look pretty good and healthy so far. So in Florida, I've started to discover that we have two main windows of growing opportunity. And I mean, that's not to say you can't grow year round here because you can. But our two main windows of growing opportunity I found is from September uh, through like January because that's when it starts getting really cold and frost and things like that. And then from March through May. Those are like our my biggest grow, growing seasons. And right now this is the time. So in the summertime it gets really, really hot. The pests are really hard to manage and you're more limited on what you can grow. There are certain things such as, you know, like eggplants, tomatoes, okra, things like that that do thrive in this subtropical environment. But most other things don't thrive in like the summertime, like in July, for example, and in June, July, August. That's a hard time of the year to grow things. That's why I'm capitalizing on this time of the year, planting as much of the sensitive crops as possible because can't do it other times of the year. Side note, I just noticed we got some little green beans growing. Yay. I love that. So exciting. Okay, if you guys hear a bunch of banging going on around, someone's getting a new roof in my neighborhood, so I apologize ahead of time. And also another update, we are getting sugar pie pumpkins. I am so determined to harvest at least one. That's all I ask, it's just one, my goodness. Okay, I'll show you. I don't think my neighborhood has ever been this loud and noisy before. So anyways, I'm planting some okra in here. This is the burgundy okra. It's absolutely stunning. I love the way that it looks. The flowers are so beautiful with okra in general, let alone the burgundy okra. So I'm just kind of breaking this apart very gently. And the thing with okra is they grow really fast. They love this climate and they really kind of, they last for a while, like the actual plant. So. I'm not like the biggest okra fan, although it is nice to have some at the house when you know we wanna make certain things and certain dishes. However, I just love the flowers. They bring me so much joy. So if for nothing, that is the reason I'm growing this much okra here. If your squash has been around for you know um, over a month and it's still this size, I would definitely consider getting rid of it because it should be much more sizable at this point. These have been attacked and they're just not gonna work. I don't think it's sunny enough, which is why I'm getting rid of these ones. 
there's you know time is money with the garden and these seasons and I'm just gonna instead plant some different um, like cabbage and things like that here this is my eggplant bed typically the issue with this particular bed is that we have uh, some ants like an ant problem in this we've always had an ant problem in this bed but what really helps with the ant problem if you're you're new to my channel I've talked about this before uh, if you're a current subscriber is neem oil neem oil has been the best thing for me to really get rid of ants in the actual garden beds now you have to be careful with where you're applying neem oil though because it's also going to disturb beneficial creatures so if you are applying you know your neem oil mix in the beds make sure it's like a specific uh, area like a that you actually want to kill those ants in this bed i'm going to just load up the uh, red, red acre cabbage and the purple cauliflower it does get some weeds but it's not too too awful so i'm just going to put them like all the rest of these sprouts here and just see what works with cauliflower you'll want to give them at least like one square foot to six inches at least i've i always overcrowd my stuff uh, so i'm just pulling everything out of here you know it's no problem i'm just going to gently place them i'm typically like a direct sow type person but most of these brassicas and leafy greens do a lot better when you are you know putting the transplants out they transplant really well they're, they're pretty easy to transplant if you don't have the ability to build your own wooden bed which not to mention the price of wood is like very expensive right now uh, these metal beds that i'm growing in are excellent i will definitely link them on amazon because they're really quick you don't need any tools or anything like that to build them and you can grow a lot of stuff in them so and they're going to last a long time so that's a good option if you are trying to get your garden started and you don't and you're like i can't build a metal or a wooden bed or anything like that these metal beds from amazon are really great i have had no issues with them the only issue i have is grass in my garden which you know that's not the bed's fault that's um i could do better at maintaining the grass but I've been doing some research on like grass in the beds and this one person, this one guy on YouTube, he says that what he does in those like hot summer months in Florida is he plants sweet potatoes in all of his beds so that these tubers, uh, I'll show you, like this, the little grass tubers, so that they don't uh, have sun and they don't get out of control in those hot months where typically not a lot is being grown anyways. So if you have experience with just growing sweet potatoes seasonally in your beds, let me know because I am a little bit hesitant to put sweet potatoes in all my beds and then have it be like this situation where it's really hard to undo that when, I, when I'm ready to use it for other crops. So if you have experience with rotating sweet potatoes then i definitely definitely want to hear from you because it's something i'm considering for those hot months uh, that i was mentioning like the um m mainly july uh, august september type months because we usually get our big harvest from spring come june early july Holy broccoli reminisco. My son must have dumped an exceptional amount of seeds in this little pot. I love these little pots. I will mention, I'm just, just on a side note while I'm thinking about it. These have been so excellent. I have talked about little like plastic pots, which some of you might know I'm like on an anti-plastic journey, which I know sounds really silly, but 
I've had these particular pots for many seasons. I reuse them. If you're reusing, you know, your plastics and things like that, okay, that's that's not bad. Um, anyways, these are really good. They don't get brittle. They are so, so cheap. And it, you can start, you know, so many seeds in them. And then also have it just grow into like a big plant, especially for tomatoes. It's like a really excellent size for that. Yeah, I had tried those like fancy little, oh, like kind of like one by one inch type pots and they're really brittle and they break apart. These don't at all. They're like your typical like garden store type pots. I do plan on doing more videos on like my non-toxic journey and things like that. But a big motivation for me, aside from just like organic healthy uh, vegetation and produce and things like that is lowering my carbon footprint and lowering the amount of plastic that we're using and just there's so many benefits that come with it so if you've been watched if you're watching this video and you're considering like having a big garden or something like now is certainly the time to do it you're making a difference even if it doesn't feel like it growing things is making a difference for your mind and your soul and it's also making a difference for the environment i actually haven't planted any of this yet in my garden it's absolutely stunning so i'm going to plant that in the big rows now so i don't want to be in a position where i have to continue to run out to the grocery store to buy things that you know i could be growing myself so that's why i'm really trying to overcompensate right now and now that we have that new chip drop now we're able to extend the rest of the garden all the way down it's like a bug or something so definitely stay tuned because spring we're gonna do a big like a massive garden expansion okay so there is a lot of construction noise going on right now between people getting a new roof and then working on a road next to us it is like, it is very, very noisy and I'm sure you guys can hear that. So I'm just gonna wrap this one up today. Thank you for watching and staying tuned and everything. Coming up here in the next few weeks, I'm gonna start doing some videos, kind of focusing on like my non-toxic journey. I'm going to also start including more sourdough videos because that's been like a huge part of my life recently and just like a, such an obsession. So, um, and then of course more uh, preservation and things like that too going into the season. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like. I would love if you considered sticking around and you know, stay in tune for all that. Again, my name is Shelby and thank you so much for watching. Bye.